damn, I've had enough of this. I was arguing with Rusty about how great Fo was. He said ramen was great. And I said, no, noodles in Fo are way better than in ramen. And it just really tilted me. And you know what? That's what tilts me. What tilts you guys? Fo being better than ramen as an opinion. Next oh. question. <laughs> well, what about you, Skimmy? Anything tilts you? What tilts me? I hate people that eat with their mouth open. I like hate me. that. I just hate close me your mouth. Too. Just, just, yeah, just just uh, be respectful. Otherwise, I'll be like, oh, not keen on that one there, champ. So that's me. It doesn't matter what you're eating. We're just going to we're gonna take it from just particular items. Yep. And branch it all the way open. Bang. See what else tilts me? This bloody chair, because it just does that. Anyway, oh. uh, here's what tilts the pros. Let's let's have a look <laughs> at this video. The thing that tilts me most of the game is when I've got like four waves stacked against the enemy tower and then the enemy is sitting under their tower with 200 HP and I ping my jungler to come and it doesn't come and then they collect the entire wave and then I'm sad and then I cry. I would, I would just say junglers, junglers in general. Probably toxic people and fizz. On Pentanet, most of the time, it's good old Marky boy. Whenever We'll be setting up the deploy, and then Mark will fly in, and I'll be like, help Mark, help Mark, and he's like, nah, boys, I'm into it. And it's just like, all right, we're, we're chilling for a minute and a half, and we're going again. <laughs> we're just, <laughs> we're just, <laughs> it's one of those moments. Um, that's definitely a tilt off for sure. People that int then start typing there when they just give up, uh, it really gets to me. And you know, normally when I can play solo queue, I just try to focus on myself, but you know, when someone just is completely inting, then they just want to give up, and they start typing, and they start bringing the team down. That's what that really gets to me. I guess when when people when people like die to wooded ganks is like probably a big one for me. Like when there's like a really obvious play that the enemy is setting up, and they just like refuse to respect it. Akko and Shaco. I get told about so many things. It's such a hard question to answer. When I'm destroying my lane opponent in solo queue and the enemy jungler just comes and saves him. Like, he'll just be in an absolute dire lane state, and the enemy jungler will just come in like superhero and just save his lane. Like, either ganking me or pushing it out. It's gotta be when my laners don't come to crab. Especially when they have priority. I understand when a man's gotta give up a crab. But when his laners have the priority and have the capability to give him the crab, and they don't want to deliver me the crab, oh, what's their problem? <laughs> Honestly, what's their problem? That really, really tilts me. But... Having a bad support is probably the most tilting thing. Uh, what tilts me in game is when I don't get help on the scuttle crab. If people aren't rotating and helping me fight the scuttle crab, I will flash for the crab if I have to. I'm gonna battle the crab to the death, and if my laners aren't there to, to fight this out with me, I'm tilted. AFKs or people that give up. What tilts me in game probably, to be honest, like er everything in game really tilts me when I'm queuing up for a game of solo queue. There you go, jungle man and only hunting for crabs all the time. Now let's uh, move forward. There was some pretty interesting stuff in there, actually. You know, there's uh, do you guys said junglers tilt you. What do you yeah. reckon? Is that a thing? Amen, amen. Junglers tilt me daily, Mac. Now I'm not always saying it's their fault, but they're just so easy to blame. It it really yeah. is, you know, a bit of a punching bag sort of situation. And look, uh, there's another bag that you guys at home can maybe pick up if you do enter this giveaway. It is going to be the swag bag. You know, got a bunch of LCO stuff in there, a bunch of LOL stuff. You know, you got your Zed statue, Rengar plushie. The list goes on. And I had it up here. Where did I put it? Oh, no, I've gone and lost it. I had the exact <laughs> amount of entries you can get in total. I know if you use the secret code, which is on your screen right now, which is Oast to Iceland, you get an extra 500 entries. I said you might get an extra one earlier i said you might get an extra three but you get an extra bloody 500 that's a lot of entries in total you can get 500 and 68 entries sorry i had to do quick maths in my head i saw a lot of numbers over on this screen and it, and it worked out in there but look 568 entries in total that's a lot of entries and you know what that means if there's only 68 entries on top of the secret code if you're using the secret code which was on your screen which is lco to iceland you're like what, eight the times the Iceland. amount of entries as anyone else that doesn't use it? So I think that's pretty that's pretty damn good. Yeah, that's a lot of entries, Mac. I think you'd be silly not to use the code. <sighs> and Mac said decode two different ways. So if you didn't see it, too bad. What, are, what did I? 
It's Oost to Iceland. Yeah, you said Elsio to Iceland. It's oh. Oost to Iceland. Well, Elsio is going to Iceland no matter what. And, well, I guess Oost is also going to Everybody's Iceland no matter what. Everybody's just running back to this VOD. Like, what does it mean? Like, is there like a secret, like, a, a hidden one? Like, there's just like a thousand entries that he's like hiding from us? Who knows? Yeah, well, look, it was on your screens. And if you missed it, well, bad luck. You can probably go into the past broadcast, click on the thing and, you know, scroll back and you get the code. We're very, very simple, honestly. But look, uh, Champ Select is ready. Game four coming up. Let's see if it's going to be another crazy damn game or if it's just going to be a stomp coming up now. Match number four, Mac. It's uh, a situation where it's the Chiefs find themselves on match point to advance, to take on peace, and keep their playoffs journey alive for one of those teams to take on Pentnet. But as for the Die Wolves, uh, lots of talking points here, Rusty. Lots of clear-cut situations as to which is their weak side, which is their strength, what their adaptations are, how to playing around that. But overall, uh, a lot of these games are consistently reaching 35 minutes and beyond, and it just becomes a clown fiesta of, you know, who can ultimately win that last team fight. I mean, yeah, last game came down to a really chaotic and unnecessary set of decisions that were made that resulted in the Chiefs winning almost instantaneously. I... Uh, throw that to the side to formulate an opinion on that game itself and it was still direwolves that took charge for the most part and then in the mid game as chiefs are wont to do and they've proven already through this series they're very good at it right now they've brought it back and then direwolves brought it back again we've seen this roller coaster in every single game we've just never seen it come to a head with madness and a base race so that was the first real unique time we've seen that one happen, and it's not something you'd expect to see again. No, it was the uh, the cherry on the top for what has already been a very chaotic series. Uh, once again, pretty much rinse and repeat from game after game, small tweaks here and there, but overall the same champions are getting locked in consistently because one, this is what they found success on, two, this is what they want to build their identity around. But it continues to be the case of what we see here on the side of Diables, who continue to go for red side, they themselves have actually locked in the Ezreal, so opting for mobility rather than continuing down this path of Jinx on repeat. Yeah, Chiefs have even chosen blue side in their one defeat as well, so it does seem like we're not going to be seeing any changes in side select. Uh, unless something gets really exposed in this game and we go to a fifth game, uh, it's possible that we'll see some kind of change up. But nevertheless, that's really far in the future. We focus on the now. Uh, and again, our 4-5 bans for the side of Direwolves aren't deviating too much whatsoever. Uh, it did feel like it was a lot more beatable when there was a Renekton there for Liv, though the teleports were good and wasn't the tank that was able to have as big an impact. Yeah. Uh, and Shock, go uh, sorry, Shock, locking in the Ezreal for Guncrab is the one big shift here. Alistar Ezreal, <laughs> a very low priority lane as mid laners have just declared war. They have, right? Uh, that was our last game mid lane matchup between Kissei and uh, Shock, between the uh, Yone and the Zoe. So, removing that from the equation. It's been so interesting in the fourth and fifth bands, really, where Dai Wars have gone with it. You know, one game has been the Scion, then it's been the Orn, then it's been the Wukong. Continuing to cycle through these top lane champions and say, this is what we're going to remove. But Dai Wars are going to lock themselves in with a classic pick here for Shock. They're going to go for the Syndra. Yeah, Syndra, good pick here, actually. Azir taken off the board. Uh, in terms of options into it, Kisei could play an Assassin. Uh, he has a magic damage jungler already, so, you know, if you feel in, like a Yasuo, it's not that bad. You can win wall the ult. Uh, but at the same time, this is much more in his wheelhouse. I, we've mentioned this a lot. Syndra, with the mana changes, survives lane fine still, but you can't just spam spells off cooldown mm -hmm. and be fine. Uh, so if you have a lane opponent that can just relentlessly push you in, you have to spend more of your mana, really, just pushing. Uh, and ranged champions make it even harder to actually be able to hit those spells, as overall the Chiefs have not surprised me if this Renekton is locked in. Uh, and Direwolves looking at their last pick going for top lane, they know the matchup. The Gragas was pretty successful overall. Uh, it could be the route they choose to go, but they do want, yeah, some physical damage again. Okay, they were thinking about the Darius, but we tend to see that going into the Scion. Now, hovering over the GP, this would be a first tier if it was for uh, Clear to lock in. We'll give them some cross-map play. Would say that, hey, if I am going to be targeted, I can still assist elsewhere. At the last second, he's just going to troll us completely. He's not played it, and he's not going to just ship back on Gragas duty. Yeah, so a lot of magic damage on the top side of the die walls here. There is one tank there from... Uh, lived. We're on a patch 11.6, so in terms of Verdant Barrier, it's not overpowered, but it's still a viable choice here. 
uh, in general for Swayth and for Kisei. Uh, looking at the bottom side of the map, that is the one major point of adaptation here where you've gone for the Ezreal just to be safer. Uh, it doesn't seem like the choice is going to be to hard prioritize winning the bot lane 2v2. They just want to go neutral and they want to unlock Cupcake even more this time. Because the Jinx has been very unsafe. We yeah. can safely say that in four games into this best of five series, the Jinx has had a very rough time team fighting where she's found success at moments sporadically. It hasn't been consistent enough perhaps for the Diables to be happy. Uh, and they've made the change here to play just neutral, poking bot lane, nothing doing, and unleash the cuppers. Yeah, I mean, how many times did we say in the series, right? Oh, I would not like to be the Jinx in this game between the Kraken Slayer into the Immortal Shield Bow into, into a Tarm Kench, into Cleansers, into TP. So many variations game upon game, but it's not changed the overall tune that unless Jinx gets that kill, still very tough to play. And the uh, the passive hasn't always been as clear cut to execute and, uh, and unwind. But in terms of the Ezreal, you talk about Emboma being one of the only players uh, in the LCO that's played it so far. We've seen one game here, Fun Gun Grab. Uh, actually, dating back to last year, it was the second most played after yeah. Aphelios. So uh, definitely still going to be a degree of comfort. He knows the champion inside out. And it's going to be a case of, what does this mean? Will he be left 1v2 and able to uh, continue to find these strong, strong early games? Or will it be a case of, okay, maybe in Bowman and Drake you get a little bit more leeway, but when it comes to team fights, I can offer a whole bunch more now. I mean, 100%, it's it's a contested pick between them both. The Kaiser priority is clear for Emboma, and Gunkrab is not out of his depth and definitely will be looking towards the two-item spikes, hit the team fights, find their stride in the 5v5 if you are Direwolves. Compositionally, that's what they're after as well. They do need Shock to not fall behind to have a genuine fighting chance in this game. Chiefs, we have already noted and highlighted how good they are mid-game. Their comp excels in mid-game. So they could once again be looking to run away with this game post 10 minutes or post laning phase end. It's game four, Rusty. It's Chiefs. They're on the precipice of victory, of advancing through to tomorrow's round against Peace. As they got two wins on the board. And from what you could see there, we're looking to try and do a crazy level one as everybody roamed towards bot side, looking to try and catch somebody out of position. But uh, Direwolf's respecting it, playing very safely, fanning out across the map to protect all areas of entry. Mm -hmm. And they do place a ward down there to see if it's Direwolf starting in lane with Forced Pro, but they are in fact looking uh, what seems to be a leash for only the blue buff at the start of this game. So they're going to be accelerating their jungler, which again is an act of self-sacrifice. Uh, and in terms of level one strength, I think that maybe the one advantage they have is that Cupcake with Headbutt can navigate Dragku's Rel, uh, where normally an Ezreal and an Alistar are just hanging in there trying to hit level two, you know, throwing Mystic Shocks on cooldown just to try and get experience. So let's talk about a couple of the adaptations first of all. Uh, the fact is that we've already seen Kiss be very strong on this one. I'll actually hold that thought for a second because level one, once again, we see this happen time and time again is uh, Alistair's get bullied out of the lane, forced uh, to burn their flash. And what can you actually do as an Alistair at level one? We only got to see a glimpse of the last half of that, but I think Cupcake headbutted and Boma at the start of the lane and gave Drag to a free engage. That's my inkling because we saw the Aftershock run out on that Alistair. Uh, sweep are going to be used here as well by Dragku, so they get push, they get priority. Not too surprising overall, it's just a nice little health lead that they're able to forge for themselves. Ah, and they don't get that second ward, that would have just been money for the side of the Chiefs in a single sweep up, but there's still some vision there, so Dai will still with something. Uh, we know that their jungler's passing to the top side of the map, we know that he's going towards the Renekton. That's not something that I think the Chiefs are actively too aware of yet. Uh, but with a sweeper there on the Udi, I wouldn't be surprised to see him do red buff into Krux and then just sweep the tribe bush to give some respite to Claire. There's the uh, action smith out for a second again. Just want to yeah, return to the point. So we talk about the sort of adaptations made in this draw, very similar to the game prior, but you know, you look in mid lane, uh, Kisei already proven how good he is on this Ari. Shock, it's a staple for him to play the Syndra. That doesn't really change the tune too much of where these junglers are parthing towards. Do you think we'll see very much the same case of go top side, guarantee that Liv gets himself a lead, unlock the map and allow him to roam again? Oh, hold that. Hold that indeed. That's a jump connecting. Guess they're down to 50%. The orbs keep uh, coming on through. Both junglers with double buff and only cycling through those uh, stances as quickly as he can. Swing the staff and ensure that both junglers very crippled returning to clear. 
Yeah, looking for Scuttlecrab fights here as well. Lane difference is going to be huge on this one. No smites for either jungler. So we're going to play the battle on can Lilia's damage over time take that? The answer is no. And Liv needs to be careful. He does need to be careful. He does have that flash, as do both parties involved in this. But nobody going to call each other's bluff just yet. Going to hold on. Both sitting on vision, though, so... The little dance around, we're going to try and buy out time. It's just going to work against each other. Only sees that ward die as he was recalling, presumably, as well. Uh, so they know that the vision in top lane has died. Another ward still available for Liv to place, however. Uh, but with Diawas having a ward in that bush in a river, they know that it wasn't placed yet. So they've got some pretty good information on top side. They do secure the Scuttle Crab on the top side of the map as well as we saw. Uh, and overall, pretty calm start to this game. The one thing you always look at, right, is the 3 minute 30. Are we looking at a Scuttle Crab? It's the level 4 for the junglers. Are we looking at a gank? Uh, but at the end of the day, our mid lane scuffle was just a reset and a teleport for both parties. And the junglers are just getting one Scuttle Crab apiece. Certainly are. As you can see also from the secondary talent trees that are getting picked up. Majority have gone for inspiration. Uh, because, yeah, flash summon a cooldown is just insane. I think I saw one of the patch notes mentioning that in a patch soon to come on live. They're going to be nerfing that. So everybody can sing its praises and not realize that it's going to be incredibly hard to try and track summoners at the moment. It is very hard to track summoners at the moment, especially with all the added runes that you can chuck in there to know. Like, it's not as simple as saying five minutes anymore for timing. It's a bit of a brain bender, actually, for supports who try and time for their team. And the person who's probably excelling is Doing B, who just does not stop thinking about time, as if you've seen him in chat before. <laughs> He's legitimately out of control. Neither here nor there in this game, however. That's a completely different region. He's got a world champion mindset, if he can think about that stuff on the fly. And we'll get to see which one of these teams will continue their journey to look to aim towards one of those world championships. As it's lived, continuing to put the pressure on to clear, keep him locked up underneath that turret. Pick up as many of these minions as possible, allowing him to get some deep vision down, keep tabs as to where only is, and play with aggressiveness, knowing that Swaif is just behind him. Very similar overall pathing. Mid lane actually had an Ariel. He did. Shock's in trouble. Forced to burn that flash right now, but it's going to be the Foxtail darting around. It's going to be Swaif that burns his flash, but it's going to be the Chase. That fine first blood here. Yeah, at the end of the day, the charm connects from Akise trying to route Shock towards Swaith as well. Still does force the flash, yes, but a really important first blood here for the side of Chiefs. Kise has been on an absolute tear through this best of five so far. No exceptions at the moment. He does seem very comfortable on the Ari, and we're seeing Shock fall behind on that Cinder, rushing the Merc Treads with his tier. So just looking to clear those waves is going to be the game plan. You can see the way the wave is currently positioned is favorable for the Ari to set up four ganks. And two charges of the ultimate and an auto attack before the charm is thrown. It's one of the most impossible things to actually work around against a good Ari player. Is when are they throwing that charm? You have no idea. The average Ari player will just ult charm, so you duke at the very start. But you can see it's not that simple against Kisei. And it's going to become even harder to try and juke and drive away from as KSA may just look to try and go for that Everfrost once again and guarantee that that combo lands without a hitch. And continues to be the rookie that can do it quite all. Uh, as we've seen from the stats of the series, uh, this is his first competitive season. He's definitely shown us a fair few champions that are out of the norm, that are more of a solo queue style about them. But to come into a situation like this, you've never beaten a Diabolus in a regular season, but you're giving a shock a run for his money. It's uh, definitely no small feat. Yeah, two wins now for the Chiefs. Match point, one step closer to going up against Peace tomorrow, I believe it is, for a chance in the final. They've well and truly done everything in their power in those two games that they won, even if it was chaotic. The Emboma mentality is just a little bit too strong at the moment for them as well. And he's gone even in his laning phase, Skimmy. You don't often get to celebrate that fact for the Chiefs 2v2, but they've been going even. And they're poised to have a really good mid-game team fight. Good talking point, because if you look oh. at the Chiefs as a whole, by the 15-minute mark, he is the lowest on the team with the gold difference, because he tends to be left to his own devices. But here he is today, and regardless of laning phase, he's making this Kaiser pick work. So many good killer instincts into the back line, sniping away key members, making sure that the fight is won before it even can properly start. 
So I'll speak the question though, what will this Ezreal offer once those two item spikes are there for the taking? The first hero of the game, it's only looking to try and start things off with. He's going to flash away to the safety of top tower. He's put to sleep, lift pouncing upon it, takes him out with the empowered swing of the Q. Cupcake now, maybe be a, a second casualty of war. This is an objective that lives and breathes the side of Chiefs. It looks to be theirs once again. It's a 2,000 gold lead roughly for the Chiefs with their Herald in tow. And the reason that that is theirs is because they keep lived around. They do not reset. They have priority in mid. Shock, limited mana pool to work with and is stuck dealing with the wave as Kisei has freedom to move. At the end of the day, you, you look at the Dial's macro movements and you say, okay, they've actually planted their bottom lane. They've deployed towards the top side of the map. They've deployed their players for the Rift Herald, but they've just lost the Rift Herald as the Chiefs have matched them and bested them. This is a really big swing. Big, big swing so early on. The second time in a row now that it's happened. Chief certainly starting to ramp up in this series. And whilst a lot of this has been chaos around the 30 minute mark onwards and team fights going back and forth from one team that can ultimately take the victory as a result. This is now two times that the Chiefs have got a clear game plan as to how they want to play up against the Dire Wolves. And able to find those avenues of, uh, you know, big win conditions so early on. We're really starting to see the Chiefs' mentality just come through strong in this best of five. They, they said they're a playoffs team through the regular season. Oh, Shock gets hit. Shock's in so much trouble right now. This is going to be a full combo collapsing here from Drake, who locking him in place just long enough to guarantee that Kissay, unscratched, picks up another kill. Just so aggressive, you know, Draku hovering in the area. Because they will throw the ultimate, will use the Spirit Rush, will actually connect the charm. He's just that good. Shock, nothing doing. We mentioned this already with his item choices, but he's gone Merc Treads with the tier start. So he isn't looking to win his lane. He is just looking to clear the wave. And he's not even allowed to do that right now. There's a drag coup unleashed. And there isn't going to be that mid-game protection that we've seen him so many times before, you know, sneak away objectives and cheat recalls with the uh, Super Mega Death Rocket. Sure, the True Shot Barrage connects in a similar way, but definitely not in terms of executing those major major buffs. So you really start to ask the question towards the Dire Wolves. You know, so early on, already at a major deficit like this of 3k, you know, you feel yourself starting to fall out of this one. We've hyped you up as this best of five team, you know, 1100 games between all five of you compared to what, 300 on the side of Chiefs? It's almost like the the master and the student coming up against one another. It definitely does feel like, though, that the Diawals have dropped off in this game. Momentum does belong in its entirety to the Chiefs. He say with no ultimate in this situation, so it's not going to be as simple as hitting a charm. Uh, but Swayze is hovering, only is hovering. And we're looking at a lot of movements from support. So you can see 100 pings following. Oh, he's put to sleep. He's just in trouble right now. He's going to get himself into the brush. Surprise, here's a new deer. Look at to try and lock in place Kisse right now. He has flash, but he doesn't have ult. Most importantly, down to 50% before this fight starts. TP's connect, TP's flying. A flash pole trying to take out Sway. And Cupcake, he has to pop that ultimate anytime soon if he wants to try and soak up the turret. But it's going to be clear that dies to the turret. It's going to be two kills in favor here for the Chiefs. It's Guncrab, most importantly, that picks up a shutdown. He needs that to try and keep himself in a snowballing position. But everybody comes to mid lane, and it's still the Chiefs that come out ahead. And when the re-engage happens, Kise does get that ultimate up finally off cooldown. So that's a major factor in the rest of that fight. Lived definitely having a massive influence across the entire map so far. And we'll see this fight one more time. Cupcake comes in. This is after the teleports have come across. Claire gets charmed, stunned by Rel, and just dies to the turret. Ezreal ultimate will secure the Lilia, so the Gragas ultimate doesn't even hit anything. Claire... Really tragic situation for him. Nice little sidestep from Cupcake ensures that he is not at risk of falling down. But still the Chiefs just driving force in this game. One step forwards every single fight that they take, no matter what Diables get. Shock has no summoners, and he's going to start this fight at 60%. The Herald has been used, and there's nobody in mid lane there to protect it. Diables are really looking to try and play for the soul point once again. It has been that strength in this best of five. But it just won't have the health to sustain. They're going to lose on two separate fronts right now. They're not going to take the dragon. They're not going to defend this mid turret. They're sacrificing so much here, Rusty. And this is just good League of Legends from the side of the Chiefs. You cannot fault the way that they're playing in this one so far. This really good standard laning phase. They win level one. Dragu takes the Gromp away from only. Sway's so also step. hovering. They'll still be in trouble. Out comes the uh, Repel. And the Drowsy afterwards. 
More so than anything, just trying to zone them away. It's once again, both junglers down low. Look at where it's keeping them, Skimmy. They're so far back. Only fighting for his Gromp. Kisei and Shock share ultimate trades in mid as well. Oh, God. Shock might just die to the it's Ignite right now. Drake could get a flash and four, but just a style more than anything. Doesn't need to do much more than that. Hit a summoner and guarantee another kill. And it does feel like Die Wolves. The mentality is starting to feel a little bit doomed. Yeah, they're feeling quite deflated in this one. You've got a 0-3 mid lane, a 0-2 jungler. Chief's playing very well still, credit to them. Starting to definitely accelerate this one. But I'm not feeling the defiance, you know, I'm not feeling the comeback just yet from the Wolves at all. Just resignation. So realistically, what are we looking at if we were to try and go the way of Die Wolves right now? We're just uh, banking on the success of a, a two-item power spike and have a team fight based around that with summoners available. Or is it just a case of Chiefs, you know? They've achieved such a strong early 15-minute game that they can just continue to be as aggressive as we saw in that previous play. Well, you can afford to give two dragons, definitely, uh, as you've been able to take the first one in the mountain. So you've bought yourself about 10 minutes. Uh, you really do just need first mythic item completions before you can even consider anything right now. As that is a very sad oh, blue no. buff reset. Uh, looking at current item completions, there is nothing Diables can or should do for five to ten minutes. Really. They're just so far behind. So you have to play around your item spikes, hope your opponents are just at the component pieces, and then maybe you can have a fighting chance in a front-to-back style of gameplay because you ultimately have a Gragas, Udi, and an Alistar, and you need to be able to play front to back, or your Syndra will just constantly die on cooldown. Ezreal may be the bastion of hope. Guncrab may be the hero that is needed. He's so hard to actually stick onto and take down. Is 1-0 so far, and we'll be doing a lot of damage with his item build. Yeah, getting his way uh, that much closer to the blue Ezreal of old, where just uh, tanky, sniping from afar, keeping everybody locked on down, and making it very difficult to try and deal with him. We'll get to see if he can get to a point in the game where he can offer that protection. Mid turret, uh, whilst it hasn't fallen down, is rather deflated. You talk about Shock being 0-3 already. Uh, it definitely wants the protection, given the amount of uh, success Kissy and Sofa found of just hitting the charm, locking him in place, and zoning him away. That turret falling on down. Just opens up the floodgates for the likes of Lived and Draku to continue to influence from top and bot. So I don't know if you've noticed this, Ezreal feeling a little bit bugged at the moment with some auto attacks after throwing Qs. Uh, they can be quite invisible, I believe, when it's a crit. Just to keep that in mind, Ezreal has some sleeper damage at the moment. Because you just can't see it. It's just a skin gap. Ah, uh, it's not even a skin thing, I don't think. Bit of a biff here in the top side of the map as both top laners showcasing what they can do. Claire just sits him with a body slam, says let me just farm this wave and force you to go away. You're going to see from the pressure when it comes to uh, acquiring these uh, jungle camps that, uh, well, Swaif is feeling very confident because he's not gone for boots of lucidity, no. He's actually gone from uh, Sork boots. He just, he wants to be a carry. Yeah, I noticed Swaith's, Swaith's Sork boots earlier. Instead of the Lucidity boots, they're a bit more expensive, and yes, you get a bit more immediate damage from them. I just wonder if it's ever worth it when it's just so efficient, especially as a jungler, to have boots of Lucidity on that first reset. But, I mean, he's made it work. He's 2-1-3, and three, so I really wasn't going to fault it too much. I just don't think boots of Lucidity are good. Uh, either way, right now, it is the Swaith and Kisei show. Lived obviously is doing a lot of work up in top lane, but he's not going to be able to deal with Claire. They're just going to butt heads and walk away from each other, slightly bruised. Uh, so for now, until we get those teleports, you know, we've got a dragon in 30. It is an ocean soul, so while we said we could maybe sacrifice two dragons, uh, the third one, you don't, you just don't want to give an ocean soul. Yeah, we saw how strong that was when uh, Chiefs had Soraka. It was not impossible to try and take anybody down, especially when they were toying with them. Pushing multiple waves at once. Almost doing a bit of a uh, uh, standoff with a 5v5, saying, well, we're going to take your inhibitor eventually, so you might as well force the fight on us. Also, one thing you'll see from Shock, uh, and this is actually something that I want to commend from him also, is when you're playing Syndra, you'll often get caught up trying to use your Scatter the Weak, or your, your E, to clear minions instantly. 
Uh, if you do that, you're actually exposing yourself to potential ganks. Rel can now just like use W on you, you can't push her away. Uh, being able to clear waves while holding that E is pretty important. Because uh, it means that you actually have tools to survive. And it makes it harder for your opponents to actually consider going on you. Uh, he has been running out of mana as a result of it, yes. But going to tier build, he can do this. I, I've, I don't think I've seen him use his E once. Maybe once to, to clear a wave. Just because it's super unsafe to do so. You know, not making the mistake of all of the others. <laughs> I mean, Liv just says hello. <laughs> Can't grab Cox, a turret shot as well, so he's now low. Multiple turret shots going awry. Three members saying hello in mid lane. It's just going to be shot bullied again. Cross map plays Rusty. I mean, and I don't Chiefs, know what Dire Wolves were doing, Skibby. In it, it top just lane. keeps continue to show up and find success. Once again, Magnus Storm locks them all in place. Draku tops up and healthy, but Swayze may fall on down. He has a Herald. He survives 10% to his name. Kisley finds the kill. Greg is gone. Chiefs all topped up and happy to play. I don't even need to summon it mids. They can just add insults or injury because that turret's gone. Yeah, I mean, it was a fight that you want to avoid if you're Dire Wars, but it was a dive in mid lane. So there is no such thing as playing safe in that situation. Oh, nice Zonia's usage. Swaith has once again navigated the globals of the world and has come out okay. He's Twice immune. Boma. These Mystic Shots are really starting to hurt. Yeah, they definitely are. And that's the thing, like, we're at a point now where the Mythics are online. You've got two full items for Guncraft, though none of them are a Mythic, it doesn't matter. Ezreal loves this build. Yeah. This is the point where you want to play around your Ezreal to try and maybe get something back. It's hard to do, obviously, but you want to try, and moments prior to that reset from Guncrab, they're able to success successfully dive in mid lane as top just... I feel like they were just walking through the turret because it was safer and they sacrificed Shock for it. It was a conflicting play, to say the least, right? No minion wave there. Nothing really to really force the aggression on towards Liv. Yes, he was low, but uh, by the time they're actually postured in a position that they might have looked at trying to take him down, uh, both Udir and the Israel were quite low. Definitely a 1v3 angle for Liv to try and play around if he found success. 7k gold lead. Or soon to be 6. It's uh, massive margins so early on to this one. We can talk about momentum. It's been two game wins on the trot here so far for the Chiefs. Claire looking for a nice all-in. That's going to bait out the Dominus. In comes the TP. Die will sit here. Numbers advantages might just favor them. Kisse hits the charm. He's just going to delete Gragas first and foremost. He buys it a bit more time. Flashes away, but it doesn't change the outcome. Now Draku hits the ultimate. Locks and plays the Alistair. He gets charmed again. He just can't play the game. Pole rises to the ground because he's angry. He's angry of how this series is going, Rusty. Ten kills to one. And Guncrab doesn't get the kill. Charm connects under Shock as well. Or oh, Kaiser. Kaiser is going to find it all. The missiles find their moment to shine. One by one, they're falling on down, chipping away the health bars of the Chiefs, but nothing sticks. Oh, oh. oh. Great scatter of the week there. Shock very clean. Nearly got hit there by the Void Seeker and nearly died to the Flash Ward. I mean, we're 22 minutes into this 9,000 gold difference. You could basically put a bow on this one if you are a Chiefs fan. Diewolves desperate. They didn't even get the kill, unfortunately, for Guncrab looking bot lane. Rel, zero health to the name. The Q misses. And that's really it. That was an opportunity where maybe Diewolves could have got some money. And ultimately, they get none. And Chiefs are the ones who come away with the kills. They get some extra gold in their pockets. Like, that was needed. Now we're looking at a 3-1 possibility here for the Chief squad and a chance to play another best of five tomorrow. So we're going to have to pause to think about that reality. It seems to be the case. Uh, no doubt we'll get word from production as to what the pause is about in just a second, but uh, it might be a tactical pause of anything, right, given the current state of this game. It's a <laughs> bit of a blowout here in game number four. You can see the stress from the uh, from the cameras on the side of Direwolves also respecting what the gravity of the situation really means. So... Um, We'll just adjust it there. Hello. Oh, hi. There we are. Um, yeah. Scary situation, Rusty. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is. <laughs> uh, this is one of those pauses that's quite hard to talk through just because we have, we can all acknowledge the state of the game right now, right? We know it's so early in the game for a gold difference to be this significant. The Mercy Rule doesn't apply in League of Legends. We're not going to get any surrenders. Dials obviously don't want to give up their opportunity in the first split, but you have to look at what can they do? You know, what, what do they actually have 
that will let them win against the chase comp right now and the answer is i can't think of anything truthfully besides the chase making a mistake yep. so we are at a point only 22 minutes into this one where you're banking on chiefs messing up probably twice that's it probably maybe once in a baron from it or twice and then you have a chance I mean, we'd seen it happen in the past, right? I, I date my mind back to a classic moment during the uh, regular split where it was Chief's game against Order. Then it came to the Baron. Order jump in, played a fight so superbly, take the game as a result. Potentially, there's another situation here as we load back in for game number four. Potentially, there's a chance for Die Wolves to find a moment to execute cleanly, but those moments have been far and few between. We've seen glimmers, but the redundant word, the word that everybody hates to hear, it continues to be about consistency. Yeah, there's definitely no consistency in this series so far. Uh, a lot of chaos that has happened. Baron is definitely on the cards now. You've got 50 seconds until the third Ocean Drake, sorry, the second Ocean Drake, the third dragon of the game for the side of the Chiefs. In terms of contesting that one, Skimmy, I would say that is unrealistic. Yep. Uh, you're probably looking towards the completion of a Surrealder's Grudge for the Ezreal, for he starts to become a serial nuisance, just an absolute pest. Uh, until such a point, you're just going to see him throw in Mystic shots, just Hail Marys left, right, and center. Uh, no Zonia's Hourglass for the Ari. Of course, it is the Cosmic Drive build, so he's killable. No Guardian Angel yet, clearly, as you wouldn't expect it for Emboma, so can be killed. I'm um, just naming members that have shutdowns. So that's the, that's, that's the avenue of entry, if there is any, is find the shutdowns, put them on your carries, give yourself something. Well, it's been flawless otherwise, as you say. You know, only one kill has been found so far, and that was on to Swaif. There's a lot of bounty, a lot of gold to claim from those bounties, I should say, uh, that could try and give them that uh, get back condition. True Shot Barrage reveals, noting that uh, Divals have a lot of members towards the top side of the map, posturing for potential Baron more so than anything. Looks to me like they're trying to place down some vision so they have an idea as to if they can contest and if they can invest time and resources towards that part of the map. but. Liv still has his uh, eyes set on pushing bot side. He has TP, trying to open up some inhibs. Kisei definitely being looked at right now. There is only two members here. They may even want to wait for only to get into the area. Cupcake says, let's do it. Instantly flash pole, block him in place. Second of TPs, but Chiefs get there first. Kisei running and gunning and hoping he can survive, but the shotgun goes clear his way. Out comes the Magnus Storm, locking in place two people so far. Cupcake hits the ultimate. He's just going to fall on down. Doesn't matter how much mitigation you have because Emboma is huge. Double, triple, Emboma the man, five, zero, and two. Yeah, I mean, you have to raise the question of was that worth it for the Dire Wolves? I feel like you'd be pretty hard pressed to say no because they weren't getting anything else. It was clear they got the kill, though Baron's just going to be taken here. And at the end of the day, Chiefs doing what we would expect to see from them. They had vision priority through mid working into the enemy red side. Ezreal Ultimate's not going to be stealing any Barons today. It's not a jinx. And it was a little bit late to the mark. And we'll see this fight one more time because the game plan was kill Kisei, get a shutdown. And then Liv says, I have something to say about that. Draku says, I was already here. And you've got Emboma able to use that killer instinct, get himself into the fray. Swaith already here. So in terms of the person that they targeted, fine from Direwolves. In terms of the timing of that fight, I think Shock wanted to recall. And Cupcake said, too bad. I can't think of a better situation. Some moment to strike. We're going in right now. We're going to find that kill. And sure, they find it. But uh, the cost continues to work against them. The trade-off just does not seem like a net positive. And uh, it is really the desperation that Chiefs, uh, sorry, the Dire Wolves find themselves in. Chiefs now in full control. They pick up the Baron for free. No contest. Three minutes to play for that Ocean Soul. Three Ocean Drakes already acquired. Well, that would be free in, in combination with that one. But, uh, you know, that's a lot of power under their belt that would continue to say... We've been in situations like this before. You know, we're not looking to try and dominate and end this game in 25 minutes. We're looking to take it late. We're looking to try and be cool, calm, collected and, and welcome you guys into us to say, what's your move? Because we're quite content being the aggressors. Yeah, most definitely. Just the way it is. See if you can force Diwals to make those errors. You don't need to force anything crazy yourself. Even if they do force, though, 11,000 gold difference. Now, they'd probably be successful. Uh, but there's just no point in giving anything to your opponents right now. Staring down the barrel of a loaded gun is Dire Wolves in game four of this series. This mid lane inner turret is destined to drop. 
The top lane turret is probably going to fall as well, maybe in about 30 seconds, depending on how Chiefs play their vision. Uh, and one positive. We'll give the Direwolves one positive. Cyrilda's grudge is online for Guncrab. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, that really is the staple of this uh, Blue Israel build, where you can fight from afar. Might not be as tanky as the Season 10 with a Death Stance, but, uh, or the Iceborne Gauntlet as well, but certainly can still pack a punch from afar. Bibles looking to mount themselves up the base defensive. Bowman's being caught. Cool. He can flash. Hits the Blast Cone as clear flashes too, but gets knocked straight back. It's disaster. The rest of the members of the site set on top side. One member gets put to sleep. Shock and trouble. Shock dead. He's say dead. The Magnus Storm connects, Draku smurfing, Draku locking him all and plays Cupcake down as well now. And Bowman finds another kill, Sway finds the second. It's all things Chiefs, blue side every game, blue is their colour. And that might be the ace of all aces that sends the Chiefs through to take on peace. Nothing left for the Dials but to watch as their Nexus falls, only it's just going to have to stay in the fountain here, Skimmy. Really clean last game here from the Chiefs. Really clean victory for them overall. The whole series may not have been, but this is the Chiefs that we'll see against Peace. The playoff buff is activated. They'd never beaten the Direwolves before today, but they take three games on the go. And they have shown us that they are the team, the dark horse really, of this competition. Just raw, unfiltered emotions coming out of the Chiefs boys as they get the win. <laughs> It's business as usual for them with the 3-1 win. They know they've got a best of five series tomorrow, so you can't blame them for having the somber looks on their faces. Easy, last game. It's hard to really get excited about winning a game like that because that really was just so one-sided. Yeah, from the very get-go, the fact that we're talking about gold leads in the 5K margin around, what, 10, 15 minutes, then to suddenly say, what, well, it's 9K now? Um, what are you talking about? You're talking about, you know, maybe break points with items, maybe moments of magic where they can try and find a fight. Too many opportunities passed them by, and the trade-off just never seemed to work in their favor. And Mac, uh, you know, you look at a series like that, it seems to be that the final nail in the coffin is when you get to a series like that, they tend to become a little bit of a, uh, a blowout. Can I just say, those player camps had to be pre-recorded. The fact that we didn't get a flex from Dragku at the end is completely <laughs> ridiculous. You know, after a series like that, a 3-1 win over Direwolves, Chiefs starting to make a lower bracket run a reality and he's looking at his second monitor. That's all I could see there. He's, he's straight into the prep for tomorrow. That's all I can think about. You know, and going up against Peace, it's going to be dangerous. But again, that game, you know, so one-sided. It just seemed like Direwolves were trying to find a way back in. But every time, Chiefs just had the answer to what they were trying to do. Yeah, every single moment. And, and this last game definitely was the biggest blowout that we had of the best of five. Uh, and ultimately, it was a case of mid hitting level six. Kisei with his Aria has shown that he's just so proficient on the champion, but he's always had support from Sway. The teleports have always been pretty fast as well from Liv. Uh, and I think overall, this is an improved Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, and we should definitely credit them for how much they have improved. But at the same time, I do want to just take that small moment to say, while we can celebrate how good the Chiefs look in this playoffs run, this wasn't the same feeling of the Diewolves that we got from the regular seasons by any means. I actually noticed the Chiefs, they were spilling this yarn in the banter channel, which I'll read it out for you guys as well. Uh, it is time to take back what is mine. I will not live my life as your second. That time is over. Every breath you take is an assault of my honor, but no more Kakarot. By my hands, you'll be cut down inch by inch, just like the way you've cut down my pride. So it seems they were really uh, channeling the inner Super Saiyans for this match today. Yeah, Vegeta taking on Goku, definitely getting it done there. You know, you talk about biceps, you talk about anime hairstyles. Draku might just need to grow that hair out a little bit longer before he decides to shave it all off again. But he's definitely got the biceps to boot. So uh, clearly drawing inspiration from anime and becoming the anime boss uh, that was able to get the dub here today. Yeah, so thoughts on Direwolves going for that Ezreal? Was it more, I don't know, just to change it up from the Jinx because the Jinx obviously didn't work the two previous games? Yeah, I think the idea is they just started to decide the Jinx wasn't worth it. Uh, in my opinion, the Jinx was probably better here anyway. Uh, at the end of the day, they mm. lost lane at level one. I think Cupcake might have headbutted uh, Kaisa. We didn't get to see it on camera, but I, I still think I would have preferred the Jinx. So I've got to be honest with you, the Ezreal was fine, uh, but the issue was the rest of the map. Certainly was. Now, uh, guess what? We got Nat down on the side lanes and she has two handsome individuals, or one handsome individual rather, <laughs> to have a chat to. Uh, because it's the post-game, it's not the pre-game. 
Look, it's it's early. It's really early here. It's crisp and bright. It's at 9:47 p.m. currently, and <laughs> I'm still waking say, up. When you said two, I was so confused. I was like, "Oh, am I joined by someone I don't even know about?" <laughs> yeah. But I am only going to be joined by Emboma for the post-game interview. Emboma, congratulations on that win. I want to say it was just an absolutely divisive win for that game four. But you guys, you know, you seemed really kind of cool, calm, collected, not too much emotion at the end of it. So how is the team feeling and why were you guys so, like, reserved? Um, we're feeling pretty great, but I think that because we're playing piece tomorrow we didn't want to celebrate too much i guess because you know like paying a best of five and then another one like tomorrow is like, like we want to go to iceland so we pretty much are keeping focus on the peace series as well without taking the celebration too much i guess i don't blame you at all i do want to ask a few questions about the draft especially from yourself you picked kaiser and played kaiser all four of those games, is that a champion that you've been working really hard on um, or like turned into a comfort pick? Or is it just something that that's what your team comp is now being built around? Um, I just think Kaisa is strong and our team plays well with Kaisa. So yeah, they didn't really target ban it or anything like that. So we just picked it every single game. Uh, I just think the champ is pretty good and competitive. So yeah, there's not, nothing much more to it really. I, I want I want to play other stuff, but Kaiser seems like winning at the moment, so we're just picking it. <laughs> I mean, it definitely is winning for you guys. Do you have any thoughts about um, Direwolves pick? You know, they, they were picking Jinx three out of four of those games, and then they picked um, yeah. Udia four out of four of those games. So do you have any opinions on that, or was it just your um, comp was so much stronger, like you didn't really care what they I were think, picking? Honestly, I, I think those champs are pretty strong. I just, don't, I just think that they didn't execute it that well, like... I felt like in one of the games the Jinx built too defensively and then I think game three they had a good chance to close the game out and then they didn't so I don't actually think their picks were bad I actually didn't mind their draft at all I just think that they didn't play the setup as well as they would have liked so yeah I'm not I, I don't think um we necessarily like smoked them in draft or anything in any of the games but I feel like we were we were in our comfort zone and I felt like they I think that's that made a big difference this series what what changes did you guys make between game one and game two because game one it, it felt quite aggressive or like a fast-paced game whereas game two and three were very slow very methodical and and played to your champ picks um i think in game one maybe it was the first game jitters or something but i think everyone except for maybe ron had like pretty bad individual blunders and even though they got the soul it felt like we could still win the game so even though we lost game one, our spirits are pretty high because we felt like they weren't playing that cleanly and I don't think they were. So going into game two, we sort of just thought, okay, we'll sort of run it back and we don't think they're playing that cleanly. So we will just, you know, do what we've been doing. And, you know, if we were winning a game, like at about like 45 minutes and they have soul, I think if they don't have soul and we make slightly better decisions, I think we'd win. So. We didn't really feel like we were panicked or anything going from game one to game two, honestly. Um, who was a lot of the shot calling for you guys and the communication for team fights and objectives? Because you guys were coming back even though you were down on dragons for most of these games. Yeah. Um, I think usually it's it's Sway Draco who do it a lot, but on our team, everyone likes to be a hero, so like everyone wants to talk. So I don't think it w we had like a designated shot caller. It's like everyone kind of talks when they're s supposed to, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. But I think, I in general, it's probably probably Swaith and Dragu in those situations. Before you guys come up against Peace tomorrow, what are you guys going to be looking at doing? What's going to be your main focus coming into that matchup? Um, I think the main thing is like out of game stuff, like taking a break. You know, like plan. I think people underestimate how like taxing best of fives can be, but I think we've definitely got the momentum coming from winning two series and practice has been going really well. And I think that if we can keep doing what we're doing, we're going to make it to finals. I think you guys have a very good chance. Um, my last question that I want to ask you is 
it has been requested by almost everyone that I <laughs> asked this question. What flavor yeah. gum are you choosing and how many pieces did you go through in that series? Because you were chewing um, gum the whole time. Okay. So it's a bit of a story. I, I'm, she flew me out to the, to the Sydney house because when I play on Perth, like during regular split, my ping's a bit high. So they flew me out to Sydney and I'm playing on low ping. So I'm in the house with the COD boys and they gave me some advice. They said that, you know, to get rid of the nerves, just chew some gum. So I've been chewing like peppermint gum. I think I've chewed like probably like 10 pieces looking at my desk. Yeah, and I feel <laughs> oh like it helps gosh. calm down the nerds, nerves a lot, honestly. So you can thank the COD boys for that. I never used to do that before, but I think I've been playing better. So well, hopefully it helps. They there you go. The insider secrets to the esports world is chew gums for the nerves. But congratulations again on the win. And I look forward yeah, to seeing thanks. you boys playing tomorrow. Yeah. See you now. See ya. It's all about coming down the nerds at the end of the day. <laughs> sure no one gets a little too it's ahead a of play himself. It's playing words, Max. Surely, hey. Has to calm down, whole calm team down calm chatting down. and calm down himself, yeah? <laughs> That's it. Now, uh, that was an interesting little interview. Good to see that he, he was flown out to get lower ping for the finals. So, you know, props to Chiefs. Yeah. They're t trying to get every advantage possible. And it seems to be working for them. Uh, you know, logistically speaking, that was great. Now, Nat, you're here as well quickly. Um, so, there was someone on the production team, and they got me to write this out. I think it's spelled, it's like, the way you pronounce it is Juacamol. Is, is that correct? I think so. I think it's actually Juacamole. Juacamole. Okay. Yeah. Is that one of those yeah, arcade yeah. The games e? with the hammer? Yeah. The E actually has an infliction. Yeah. yeah you spelled okay, it wrong, cool. Mac, but yeah, you were close. Yeah, pretty pretty close. Is it is it supposed what to be an A at on? the end? Anyway. Have um, we missed an inside joke here? What is going like, on? Probably. What you guys happening? were busy. You guys were working. You know, uh, <laughs> You're really I'm, triggering I'm me. What is happening? to get towards the end of the broadcast so <laughs> I can chew on my tortillas. Now, um... I think it's time oh, for the play of the day. Do you guys have any thoughts on what was the play of the day? Let's go. Down the desk as always. Rusty, you first. Skimmy's la 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 la. <laughs> Has to be. Oh, uh, yeah. There's okay, sure. No better my, moment. My moment aside, if I'm looking at a play, uh, pfft, I'm trying to think of one at the moment. Uh, nah, that's just stuck in my head and I'm tilted off the face of the earth. <laughs> uh, let's just go with Jinx Ultimate Steals because it's always comical. <laughs> All right, that. you have any thoughts? Um, not really. I mean, the only, like, big play I can think of is the end of game four there. But I wouldn't really say it was a play of the day. I think that game was just a little bit of a, a stomping on poor old Direwolf. So I actually don't have a guess. This is probably the first time I don't have a guess. I hope it is not the Jinx steal. Game Please three, don't be the mid Jinx steal. Game game, mid lane team fight. Mid no, lane I'll, team I'll guess fight? game two. Game two? Well, yeah. I think Rusty's closest with at least game three. But it was... The TP diff. Chiefs saving their base during the uh, almost not uh, quite yeah. base race before chaos ensued. And we are going to see the two TPs going back to make sure that uh, the game was not won yet by Direwolves. So there you go. Look at that. Very clutch with the TPs just at the right moment. And from this point, what do you know? Turned around. Chiefs managed to bring it back and get another game on the board. So uh, you want any... We don't have Jubes here. So... Can we play it again and can we get Rusty to do a Jubes impersonation? I'm not doing it. No. Nah. Darn it. Oh, I have no throat left. <laughs> no throat left. Oh, well, I think it's you've got gone. tomorrow off anyway, so you can give your throat a rest, can't you? Look at that. Gun crap yeah. 50% and just, yeah, tapped. See you, mate. Absolutely tapped. But look, there you go. So big play coming out from the Chiefs there to make sure uh, the game wasn't lost then and there. And, you know, moving forward, let's have a quick look at the bracket where it currently stands after this lower bracket match today. We have to say goodbye to Direwolves, who only managed to get one game on the board in both of their matches here in the playoffs, which I find is a little bit saddening because we saw them firing up so much yeah. on the way to the end of the split. And then as soon as it came to playoffs, they're just dropping the ball. Chiefs, though, different story, only dropping that one game to Direwolves at the moment. I don't know if that trend's going to continue going up against Peace tomorrow. The but run is on. Yeah, it's happening. I said this last week that, you know, I, I didn't think it was possible, but I really wanted Chiefs to do the Cinderella story. And it's kind of coming to fruition. I mean, sure, they're coming up against Peas, who have been looking pretty neck and neck with um, Pentanet, but it's still possible. I'm just, oh, I, I can't wait for the grand final. We've got only two days left now, or 2.1% uh, days left, because we're at the end of today. Not quite all the way 
towards the end. We're still here. We still can say some words, you know, share some thoughts with you all at home. Um, that's exactly how it happened. And we got one player in particular who played very well today. Do you want to guess it? Because you didn't seem to want to guess the player of the day today. Kise. I reckon Kise. Mm? <laughs> Nat? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I, I already know, but yeah, Kise. I would have oh. said Kise or Swaith, but you guys, everyone seemed quite unanimous in who they wanted. I thought Swaith still played really well. I think he initiated a lot of things. He enabled Kise to kind of get ahead, but ultimately Kise was doing the plays, and, and that's where my guess is going to be for this. Well, there you go. It was, in fact, Kise, who was the player of the series, doing bloody work over all the four games, you know, maybe... Bit of a slower start in game one, but after getting through that, having a pretty spectacular performance in game two, three, and four, Rusty. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, overall, he had a very solid best of five series, and, mm. and he was the person that we were really looking at. Because remember, he nullified Shock. Yeah. Shock is, you know, working with Swaith, I will say, he nullified Shock. But Shock's the person on Direwolves that can get them over the line. So he wasn't able to actually play League of Legends. Suddenly, Chiefs are able to win the series. Coincidence that Kise plays well and it happens? I don't think so. I think he played very well. I just think the sky's the limit, right? If you're looking at this as a situation of he's 17, he, this is rookie split. He's got 200 less games compared to Shock. He's just able yeah. to come in there, no nerves, no drama. Say, look, pick me this matchup. I'll show him how to play it. Um, able to really, yeah, bully in a best of five when you've never beaten this team before. I think it's just kudos that this is a player to keep your eyes on because he's going to go straight to the top. Well, that's it. I would really also like to, oh, to quickly jump in just while we're still talking about stats. Yep. But uh, Chiefs won every game that they got first blood on, and Kise actually got two out of the three first blood. So, again, yeah. another reason why he is player of the day. He just enabled it, got them on the early roll, and the game was theirs. There you are. Huge impact getting things off, uh, kicking things off nicely there for Chiefs. And uh, speaking of the Chiefs, I think they've been creating some memes for us on Twitter. So let's bring up uh, what memes they've made. <laughs> Drag Quest runs it down your lane, what you do. Uh, that's a good question. Rusty, what are you doing? I mean, losing, right? <laughs> it's probably the only thing you're surrender. doing. Putting out the vote for the surrender, Slapping that's what I'm that doing. slash FF, yeah. That's a <laughs> <laughs> terrifying if he's running down at your lane. He's, uh, he's got a bit of a mane going on there. Did you guys, you guys saw Drag Koo the other day as yeah, well, didn't yeah. you? He's now, look like, I think I saw an emote there somewhere in oh, chat. It's too, the best so. sub emote I've ever used. Yeah, that was an instant <laughs> sub right there. That is, that is just success. That's just pure money. That's, uh, that's branding gone wild. So, yeah, Drag Koo or Drag Koo. Um, yeah, two different beasts, but both uh, insanely handsome. That's it. Drag Queen. That man is <laughs> doing work so far for the Chiefs. And again, big impact uh, in the support role. Finally, getting some engages towards the end of those games. But look, uh, speaking of, that's bringing us towards the end of the day. So, you know, one more day. Uh, you two, in particular, won't be here tomorrow. So any thoughts on this matchup? Because you won't be here to share them. Oh, I mean, mm. I look forward to Peace versus Pentanet in the finals, definitely, after this best of five. Uh, that last game from the Chiefs actually did give me a lot of hope, though. So, you know, it wasn't like a chaotic win. It was a real solid stomping. So I actually do have a lot more faith in them. I just I worry that Peace is still too good. Well, let's see how peace feel tomorrow. Skimmy, any final words? Yeah, I think for me, uh, if Kise and Swave can play like they did today, they could definitely do battle. I feel like that was the area of focus for this particular game, this series. I feel like if they can bring that same level of success tomorrow against Peace, definitely another area that they can exploit. I think just in terms of bot lane, uh, Emboma going up against Guncrab, now going up against Violet, it's a completely different beast. So Violet, arguably in the same category as Predator for the best bot lane in, 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 in the region. So I think it's going to be a, a far, far tougher ask this time around. Well, let's see where we end up. That is going to be the end of day three. Day four coming up again, 6 p.m. tomorrow. Peace and Chiefs. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you then. Literally anywhere and you die. So scary. All right, because the Tempest Fate actually locks uh, Shock in place of all people, probably hoping that wasn't the case. Gunkrab takes out in Bowman. Both Eddie carries looking to do whatever they can, but it's going to be the Direwolves that have the damage just a little bit more so far. Kisse takes out Shock. Midland is flexing their power, and it's Gunkrab that removes Swaith. He gets himself a shutdown, hits the Zap, trying to cut this all running, protecting, hoping that Cupcake can hit a stun, can hit it. For the fights, whereas Direwolves much more oh. keen to not get caught out of position. Once again, look to try and take that team fight oh. as a result right now. Draku jumps in, unprotected, nothing to offer, and falls on down. 
John Crab is unstoppable. He's getting excited. He's looking to run them all down, but he's actually thrown away in the back line. Unprotected sweep to take him out of the fight straight away. The killer instinct in. He's gone golden, but he'll fall on down. A shutdown goes the way of Mboma. The rest of the Chiefs are fighting a second fight in the middle of the mid lane, and as Dibbles, forgetting that their AD carry is dead, still being aggressive, still charging forward, and still hunting for the first eight. The Steam Souls did, I guess. Yeah. Like oh. I said, once again, yes, they look at charge on through first of all. It's a moment of fix a kill instead, because in terms of timings that you highlight, it'd be a big talking point to go for right now. As clear, seems to be put out position, but he's tanky. There's the flash pole, and they just explode them apart. And just like that, it means it's a double kill for Buff is still there for another whole minute. It's do or die. Lift is asleep. He's gone gold, and the second okay. turret is out. It's a beautiful magnet storm. The magnet storm is clutch, but the pole rises is asleep. He's gone gold, and the second okay. turret is out. It's a beautiful magnet storm. The magnet storm. Flash pole, lock him in place. That can the TPs, but Chiefs get there first. Kife running and gunning and hoping he can survive, but the shotgun goes clear his way. Out comes the magnet storm, locking the place. Two people so far. Cupcake hits the ultimate. He's just going to fall on down. Doesn't matter how much mitigation you have, because then Bowman is huge. Flashes two, but gets knocked straight back is disaster the rest of the members of the site set on top side one member gets put to sleep shock and trouble shock dead he's like dead the magnet storm connects dragu smurfing dragu locking all in place cupcake down as well now and boma finds another kill sway finds the seconds it's all things chiefs blue side every game blue is their color